Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build one of these. This is a wheelchair stroller adapter that I designed and built with my students. For this project, you're going to need a few things. First thing that you're going to need is an infant car seat. Uh, the car seat that we are using is a Bright Tax. Uh, we actually know that you can go to your local fire department and lots of times they have extras of these that they can donate to you. You're also going to need some 3 quarter inch EMT conduit. This is very cheap metal tubing that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or other hardware stores. Uh, you will need one 10 foot long piece of this, 3 quarter inch, and that's about $7.50. And you will also need a uh, one half inch piece. They come in about five foot segments, and those are about $5. You're going to need a conduit pipe cutting tool. This one is made by Rigid. It costs about $25, and you can buy that in the hardware store in the same place where you can buy this, which is the electrical section. You're going to need some of these. And we have a full parts list as well on our project page. This is Maker Pipe. Maker Pipe is a brilliant invention. Uh, it is a way of connecting parts of EMT conduit together to create structures, and that's what the majority of the structure is created with. You can buy these by the, the connection, and so we have a list of a certain number of uh, 45 degree angles and 90 degree angles in order to build this entire project. We also have a uh, wheelchair seat belt, which we're using for this project to help buckle the car seat onto the structure. This uh, particular one is also linked on the project page and costs about $12. And we are also using some Velcro cable ties. These are 18 inches long, and the entire pack of eight costs uh, about $25. Uh, you can probably find these in, in smaller packs to save a little money but um, they should be 18 inches long or longer. So the first thing that you're going to do is build the structure, the top part, which is a rectangular structure that the car seat sits down into. And in order to do that, you're going to cut a few lengths of the EMT conduit. For this first part, you want to cut it a little bit long because different car seats may be a little bit different shaped and that will allow you to trim it down to size later. And what you're going to do is take your conduit and lay it into this groove right here of the car seat where it would attach to a stroller. And what we're going to do is slide it to the point where if we were to put a cross piece across the back of the car seat, we would also have a little bit extra at the front. Because as I said, we're going to make this a little long, and then we're going to cut it down. So this is the length that I want. I'm going to take my pipe cutter, which is simply a round metal blade and some rollers that can gradually tighten. And so once I have this, Gradually tightening and spinning the tool. Until the pipe is cut. You're going to make two this length. One that will fit on the front of the car seat. And one that will fit on the back of the car seat. So now that I have my two pipes, I'm going to put these T-connectors on the end of those pipes. And we're going to use this to help us figure out how big, how long the pipe at the back of the engine car seat should be. So I'm going to place both pipes into the slots. And what I want is for the back pipe to come right along this little ridge where the car seat would fit into the infant car seat base. And so I'm going to take one of my extra pipes here and I'm just going to slide that through. Now, I'm going to rest that bar right onto this ridge, and 
And then I can slide this one to allow me to fit this pipe in. So when that's all connected, it should make a nice, secure connection at the back here with two 90 degree angles. Now I'm going to mark this pipe and I'm going to cut it at that length. So now I have three sides of my rectangle, and they fit nicely here with a little bit of an angle. And now I need to make the adjustment for the fourth side of my, my rectangle. And you can see I cut another pipe the same length as the one at the back. You have a little bit of wiggle room inside of the maker pipe to slide it, but you don't have a ton. So it's important once you've made this piece at the back that you get pretty close to an accurate measurement so that this piece sits on this other ridge at the front of the infant car seat so it has a stable plow. Now the next thing that you're going to need to make is the base that the structure fits into. And this is very similar. This is simply a short piece of EMT conduit that goes into one of the maker pipe connectors, the 45 degree connector, and it actually clamps directly onto the footrest of the wheelchair itself. So you can take a little scrap of your connector and you can pop it in there and you can tighten it down. You'll have to loosen it a little bit when you get everything adjusted, but you want it to be on there nice and secure so that this part doesn't slide out of the maker pipe. So now that we've got our rectangular structure that sits on the hip and car seat, and we also have the attachment point that goes onto the footrest of the wheelchair, we need to build the leg that connects the two things together. Now to build a leg, we're actually going to take a piece of the half inch EMT conduit and we're going to slide it up inside of the three quarter inch EMT conduit and we're going to drill those together. The important thing to note to keep in mind here is what we want is to make sure that this end piece of half inch conduit is as long as it can be in order to fit down into the base attached to the wheelchair. This three quarter inch on our design is 19 inches long and our half inch conduit is almost that long. It probably comes about four inches short of the top. You can always trim off the top to make your design shorter. Different wheelchairs are gonna take and different people are gonna need different heights. But uh, 19 inches is a good place to start and going about that long 15 inches or 16 inches on the half inch pipe will work just fine. So what we're going to do is slide that in there and then we're going to use our attachment point at the base to make this stick out as long as it needs to. So here is my three quarter inch tubing. It's sticking an inch out from the top of my maker pipe and when I place this in here that's going to go down that distance. I want to make a mark on my half inch tube showing how deep it can go in so that it gets the best, most stable connection. Now that I have my piped mark and I can line that up with the bottom of the three quarter inch tubing, I'm going to take a drill and I'm going to go slow because I'm drilling through metal. And I'm going to slowly work my way through both pipes. I'm going to do that at two points. So now I have my two legs. Uh, these particular legs have a total measurement of 21 and a half inches and they slot down nicely 
into my connectors on the wheelchair without leaving a gap. Depending on the length of the attachment point that you made on your uh, wheelchair footrest, the part that goes on there, your legs might be a little bit different, how high you want it to go. As I said, we can always trim a little off the back of these two legs if we find that it's too high and we want to shorten it. It's completely adjustable. But now we need to attach these on to this. In order to do that, we're going to use the 45 degree angle connectors of the maker pipe. And so the way they work is basically the same, except you'll notice that they are mirror images of each other. And so you have to find two that pair together to create that connection there, and then the opening for the pipe to go in there. So now that we've assembled the basic structure of the device, we have the rectangle that the infant car seat sits down into, we have our two legs that hold it up, and we have the two attachment points on the wheelchair itself, we're going to attach some safety mechanisms to this. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get two T connectors, maker pipe, and those are going to perform two functions. One, it's going to help keep the car seat from sliding down towards the, the wheelchair uh, user. And it's also going to uh, clamp a seat belt in there that's going to help hold our car seat to the structure. So, again, two maker pipes, maker pipe attachments, and we're just going to put them on there and then we're going to slide them to the proper, uh, proper position after we've got them on loose. So we have these T-connectors placed. We're going to make sure that they are in the proper spot before we attach the seat belt and lock them down. So for this process, we're actually going to put the infant car seat into its cradle, and then we can move these and adjust them so that, one, they need to be spread out just a little bit so that they don't push the car seat up. We want to make sure the car seat makes good contact here. And then they also can be slid up and down so that the, the connectors for a stroller on our infant car seat actually will butt up against them and that'll add a little bit of extra uh, support as the wheelchair may want to slide forward. So. so that the bar is coming along the back here and coming along the front here. Now you can see that I can adjust this bit of maker pipe here to slide it to where it'll add some support and tilt it so that it's not pushing the, the infant car seat up. I'm going to do that on both sides. And I'm going to tighten it down just a little so that it doesn't slide out of place. But not all the way. We still have more work to do with this. All right, now I'm going to take the car seat out. Here are our two supports. Now, we're going to use the clamping pressure of the maker pipe to actually hold our seat belt, which is going to go through this belt path on the infant car seat so that you can actually belt the car seat onto the metal frame. So, we have two parts. This is a, a wheelchair, um, actually, a, a wheelchair um, seat belt that we bought on Amazon. It's about $10 or $11. And we're going to put this side over here. This can really go on either side probably. I'm going to take the belt, align it properly, and I'm going to slide that down into that maker pipe as far as it'll go. And then I'm going to crank this down as tight as I can make it. And those two pieces of maker pipe will get tighter and tighter and sandwich the belt, seat belt, right in between to the point where I cannot pull it out. Now obviously this is not, you know, car crash uh, secure seat belt, but it is 
uh, keep the thing in place secure. On the other side, this is where I have the uh, actual buckle of the seatbelt. I want to get this buckle as close down in as possible so that it doesn't interfere with that belt path. And I'll, we'll see that in just a minute. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold the seatbelt right at the base of this sewn area. And that's what I'm going to shove in. I may need to loosen my maker pipe a little bit to get that in there, but I'm going to shove that in. Get it in there as deep as possible again. And then I'm going to crank down on that maker pipe. Now I have a seat belt. Now this is not the seat belt that's going to hold the child into the infant car seat. The infant car seat has its own seat belt buckles for that. This is going to simply uh, keep the infant car seat from maybe bouncing up and sliding forward. Uh, again, if it does slide, it's going to slide towards the person in the wheelchair. So that's, that's good. However, this is going to provide a lot of stability and keep that infant car seat from, from going anywhere. So let's try it. Having these also helps the user know where this should go, which puts it in the proper alignment so that we keep our line level. We don't want to tilt our child too far forward so that they are, you know, their head is, is flopping forward on those uh, flimsy newborn necks. We want it to be uh, staying tilted backwards as much as possible without it being uncomfortable for the user. Now, Flip this around. Here's our seat belt. Our seat belt buckle. We just slide that through the belt path, buckle it in, and pull it tight. So the next safety mechanism, as you can see, because we put a half inch piece of conduit inside of a three quarter inch piece of conduit down at our connecting connection point here, it's got some wobble to it. So in order to reduce that wobble, we bought these 18 inch Velcro cable loops. So they have the loopy end on most of it and then you can uh, stick the Velcro on the other end. And they've got this little clip on the back. And so what I'm gonna do is feed this through the bottom belt. And essentially, I'm gonna do that on both sides. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're just gonna pull it tight towards us and loop it around the wheelchair itself. That will keep this much, uh, much sturdier, much more stable with a lot less um, wobbliness into it. So now that we have all of the structure and we've got all the safety mechanisms attached, what we're going to do is have the ability to adjust everything. Different wheelchairs have different widths, uh, different configurations of the leg. They, a lot of them don't have these adjustments for somebody with a you know, broken leg that needs to keep their leg out. So there's, there's all sorts of ways that this can be adjusted. People are different sizes, uh, different heights. And so the adjustments that can be made are one, you can loosen up all of these attachments. So the first adjustment point is these attachment points on the footrest. A narrower wheelchair is going to need to have these be able to, to swivel a little bit more forward so that these legs aren't angled quite as much in. So loosening that up and getting that adjustment is, is important. When I loosen that up and I loosen these up, then I can actually shift this a little side to side so that it comes, I want to get it aligned to the middle of the wheelchair. And loosening these up also allow the main frame here to move forward and back uh, to accommodate different leg rooms. I have lots of leg room right here. So 
if I wanted the child to be a little bit closer to me, and I could loosen these up, and I could work this frame towards me. And as long as these supports stay in relation to the back and the front, the infant car seat will fit just fine. I can move this all the way to the back if I wanted to, knowing that we're going to pull this using the uh, cable loops towards us. So that's all a matter of how comfortable we are with different configurations and getting it uh, looking the way that we want. And we can also, of course, if we want this to be shorter, we can actually cut some from the top of these legs and that'll, that'll lower it down. So once you've found a configuration that feels comfortable to the user, as well as seems to work for the infant car seat, then you can just lock everything down as tightly as possible so that there's no wiggling uh, as you're using the device, and then it's ready to go. Sitting in the wheelchair, I can easily remove this by unbuckling the infant car seat. I could either remove my child, hand him off, or I could lift the whole car seat and set it aside securely. I can undo my belt loops here and just stick those on there. And take that away and set it off way. And now I have my wheelchair back the way it was originally. Reverse that process and you're off to go.